In the last section, we looked at Reason's fundamentals and how to get audio and MIDI in and out of it, and also how it's put together, what the different sections mean, and how it works in terms of connecting devices to each other, how the sequencer works, and what the transport panel down at the bottom of the screen does. In this next section, we're going to look at MIDI, and we're going to start in this video with recording a MIDI track, which is one of the most basic things you can do in Reason. It's built around the idea of a MIDI sequencer. The first thing to do is to make sure that MIDI is set up to be firing into your computer correctly. And this is something that we looked at in the last section. If you go up to Reason's Preferences, and then the Control Surfaces section, this is where you can check that your device has been registered. I'm not going to run through that again because that's already been covered in the previous section. So here we have our Novation Xiosynth set up. If I press some keys on the synth, you can see that MIDI is coming through. You can tell this, obviously, because it's making sound. But also, if you look in the sequencer, we've created a Kong drum machine. And when I press a key, you get a little green area showing up on the device, which denotes that MIDI is coming through. For every device that you create in Reason, you can just select its sequencer track to direct MIDI to it. You can tell from this red outline here that the device is receiving MIDI. Now, before you start, you might want to set the tempo of a project. Uh, it's pretty easy to change this later on, especially with Reason's time stretching of audio, um, but it's better if you if you can to decide it at the start. So let's take this down to, let's say, 110 BPM. We'll stick with 4-4 time because that's nice and simple. You can record directly into a track, um, but often in Reason you'll want to create loops or clips uh, because things like drum beats, bass lines, they can benefit from being composed in clips, and then copied and pasted. And the way that you set up recording is to set the left and right locators around a specific area. So here, let's say we're going to set this bar loop here. We're going to turn looping on, which just means that when it, the playhead reaches the right marker, it will go back and start again. We're going to turn our click track on because that will help us record our beat in time. There's also an option here called pre-count and that's quite handy because what that will do is give you a number of clicks before it starts to play back and record. So that gives you time to just get into the beat and to know exactly where you're up to. So if I move the playhead to the left marker, activate the pre-count. When I hit record, I get a countdown and then Reason will record whatever I play into that loop. So let's give that a go. Now you'll see that. I actually misjudged the pre-count there. I thought I was going to get eight and I got four, but that's okay. That's why I set up a loop. So when it got to the end, it just went back to the start and I could keep playing and fill in the bit that I missed at the beginning. Obviously, next time I do that, I'll know that the pre-count is four and not eight. So if I turn the pre-count off, play it back. Turn the click down a little bit. And that's our first MIDI loop recorded. Now what we've done here is record a MIDI clip. And in the next video, we'll have a look at how you work with MIDI clips.